Hey you, yeah you, do you like college basketball? Of course you do! And let me tell you, I got the perfect place for you. The College Basketball Discussion Group is one of the largest college basketball communities on the web. With nearly 4,000 college basketball fans from around the country, you'll be a part of one of the most active and growing communities on Facebook. You have no reason not to join. Apply for the group at facebook.com slash groups slash college basketball discussion, or just search for the College Basketball Discussion Group on Facebook. So go ahead, do it. I'll wait. Did you do it yet? No, you know what? I know you're going to do it. And while you do, let's intro the show, shall we? How you like them apples? Starting off the show with a new intro. Stepping up the production quality here at the College Basketball Discussion Podcast. Welcome in, guys. I'm your host, Alex Freeman. And uh, today, I'm joined by my two Central Time Zone compadres. Uh, We got Aaron Thrash up here. How are you doing today? Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm I'm good. It's Saturday. I start school next week, so I'm slowly accepting it. Not looking forward to it, but it's it's going good over here. All right, all right. And then back by popular demand, we have our beefy baritone, Bragan Kelly. Hey, what's up, Alex? What up, man? How are you? Oh, I'm I'm tired. It's a little bit early, <laughs> but uh, it is early. I mean, it's my fault. Doing... It's my fault that we're doing it so early, so I it's can't okay. complain too much. You're always busy, man. We always have to dictate towards uh, Bragan, but. It's all good. Aaron and I don't have a life, so, you know. Pretty much. That's true. Yeah. You know, I, I was going to have a life. I, I got to tell you guys a quick story here off the top. I mean, you guys know, but you guys, you know, the audience don't know. So um, I made that intro last night in part because I made a grave mistake earlier in the day. Um, I've been fiending for Madden 19 to come out because uh, I haven't had a Madden game in a while since 15 and um i had a super busy day at work so i the plan was to go pick up my order my pre-order at gamestop after work and then i just got so behind and i got so busy i didn't get out until uh after gamestop closed so no madden last night meant that i got to work on the show a little bit so you're welcome everyone um (laughs) So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you want to know where the other co-hosts are, they're off uh, playing Madden 19. And I'm not. Okay? You happy? <laughs> I'm you <happy>. good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I can tell you for a fact that the minute I've got this show edited and rendering and uploading, I'm going to go to GameStop, pick up that pre-order, and that's what I'll be doing today. So, if you want to know where I'm at, I'm playing Madden 19 right now. So, I'm not buying anyway. it until they get all the glitches fixed. <laughs> I'm, wait, I will I'm waiting you know, on you. I'm, You're my tester. Yeah, I'll, I will gladly test it for you. I'm gonna play it no matter you know how many bugs they have. So oh, we know. <laughs> we, uh, but we, for now, we clearly know. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, they finally don't have a Patriot on the front cover, so I can buy it now. Is that why you were? Did you boycott it? it? So that's that why what? I was boycotting it for the last two years, honestly. And then now, I mean, AB's on it, so I got to get it. You know. So anyway. For now, I'm here, so you all better enjoy this show, okay? And I think you will. Um, so for the third, well, I guess the second time this off season, uh, we changed our format of recruiting coverage. Uh, if you haven't seen the last three episodes, we've been going over the class of 2018 for all the major conferences. However, we thought the show was getting a little stale. Um, we wanted to get back to what this show uh, should be about, and that's obviously discussion. Um, so we completely changed things up. Um, we're exclusively going to be talking about the JBA now. That's what we're doing. This is a JBA show where all the time uh, we are exclusively talking about the JBA. So let's get in, into <laughs> it. You guys aren't laughing. Uh, no, but anyway. It's not funny. That's why. I'm kidding. Oh <laughs> I try to I tell one joke. Yeah, leave the jokes to me. All right, fine. Um, well, kidding aside, <laughs> uh, what we've done is we've ditched covering the whole conference. Instead, we came up with a list, our consensus list of the top 10 recruits from the conference. Or the 10 guys we just wanted to talk about. Uh, we've all researched them and scouted them, and we're going to have a more of an open discussion format. And we're hoping that instead of giving you the quantity of the entire conference, the quality of the show goes up. And that's what we're all about here is giving you the best product possible. 
Uh, but before we get into all that, some crazy news dropped on Wednesday. I'm sure most of you saw it in the group, but I just want to round up what happened. Uh, the NCAA, the stubborn NCAA, announced drastic changes that would be coming to college basketball, including more college visits for incoming recruits, agent representation for both high school and college students, increased draft declaration flexibility, and uh, tuition payments for athletes returning to college to finish their degree after leaving early to go pro. On top of that, agents uh, through the NCAA must be certified by the NBA Players Association until 2020, and then the NCAA will have its own certification process. Plus, the NCAA is allowing agents to pay for players' expenses, including meals, transportations, and other expenses involved in the transition to go to pro basketball. Most of these rules take effect officially August 15th, which is this Wednesday, but some of them need uh, still to be approved by the NBA and USA basketball programs. So there's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo here, uh, but guys, I just wanted to get your overall thoughts of this rule change. Is the NCAA better off today than they were prior to this news dropping on Wednesday? I want to say yes, just because they're definitely taking steps forward in trying to uh, make the players happy. But at the same time, it was just very out of the blue. And the NBA had no idea it was going to happen. And it just seems very kind of thrown together. And I feel like there's just a lot of kinks that need to be worked out before they mm -hmm. actually uh, went through and put all of these into action. But at the end, I think they're definitely trying to improve. I, 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 um, I agree Use with your words. I agree with what Brayden said. Stop, Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with what Brayden said. Um, I don't really feel like they did anything more or less. They they put a Band-Aid over the problem. The big problem right now is not about agents. It's not about um, – the, the draft thing was great. I like the what they did with the draft. The problem arises, though, what – is the school going to hold that scholarship for that specific player if they don't get drafted? John Kyle Perry brought it up in in a sports center the other day. There's a lot of what ifs that need to get kinked out. USA Basketball, they're the ones that are going to pick the elite prospects coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. They want nothing to do with that. <laughs> right. It's It's just weird how... I mean, the NCAA continues to prove that they're just not a well-rounded organization. They are. And they have so many issues because they did all of this. It, it's like, I don't know, it, it's like telling your buddy that you're going to let him uh, borrow uh, another buddy's Ferrari. Like, do you think your other buddy's okay with that? Like, you might want to run it by your other buddy before you tell your other buddy, you know? like, And it's not good business practices. I'm in the business college and... I did stuff while I was in the Marine Corps per pertaining to business. This is – whenever you put together a memo, whenever you put together a letter, whenever you do something like this you and you include someone in it, odds are you need to talk to that other person before you include them in it. Right. It, it just <laughs> stuns me that the NCAA did this on their own merit and thought, oh, yeah, it'll be fine. And, and no one thought of bringing up the fact that it might not be fine and they might want to run it by – like they just thought the NBA and USA Basketball would be on board, and they're USA they're... Basketball wants nothing to do with this, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I what's in it for them, though? What's, what's in it for in them? It for you, it... What's in it for USA Basketball to pick these elite prospects? It's not. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know to be exactly. honest because they already pick elite prospects. I mean like they they you take know. the US they take take the take the elite prospects. I need to use my words. They take the elite prospects to that um to the under 19 nationals every year. So they so do it's nothing that what outside of what they're already doing. Exactly. So it's just creating it... it's just creating another scouting department that honestly doesn't need to be made. When that NBA probably has the tools to do that. Or the NCAA needs to create another department specifically for that. If they want to do, if they want to do the whole agent, agent for elite level prospects, they just need to create a new department specifically for that. In my opinion, 
I think yeah. more or less what they're upset about is the fact that they have to work with the NCAA without being asked to work with the NCAA. Yeah. And and the fact that some of the quote unquote elite level prospects are international guys. That's another thing I noticed. Okay. Yeah. And it's it's just a weird it, it it's is. very weird, strange, and it came out of nowhere. It surprised the heck out of all of us. And and if you guys saw in the group I put out a, a quote unquote red alert. Uh, you know that, that's when that's when our big stuff drops, obviously. And and the thing is, I didn't take a stance on it either way. I didn't want people to think I was taking a stance. I, I was just letting y'all know, hey, this went down. And I did say this changes everything because it does. It has the potential to change everything. The NCAA has stopped uh, living in old Manistan and have changed their rules slightly toward the right direction. So that's what this is. I think. I think it's toward the right direction. I don't think. It's a end-all, be-all solution. They're thinking the right way. They have some new-aged beliefs, but they went about it the really wrong way. Yes. I, I would have to agree with that. So it's a start. And, again, I just wanted to go over that real quick. I, I didn't think we could, you know, uh, do do this show justice if we didn't at least touch on it. So we touched on it. That's that. You can read more about it on NCAA's website and all over the world. Just type in NCAA is dumb and you'll get it. So, um, Pretty much. This week, um, we are getting back to our recruiting coverage and we're going to be going over the highly anticipated Pac-12. And if you know why it's highly anticipated, then good for you. But... Uh, again, we picked out 10 top recruits. We actually have 11 because uh, there's a little asterisk here, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, we are going to start off with my boy who I've already claimed. That's right. I saw him first. You can't have him. It's Bull Bull. Bull Bull from Oregon. Oh, my God. Seven foot two. You ready for this? Seven foot two, 230-pound center, five-star from Henderson, Nevada. Ranked number four by ESPN and 24-7. Bull Bull, son of NBA god, Manute Bull. And I say that because he was, you know, seven foot seven. But, I mean, he didn't, he didn't do much in the NBA except block shots. But he's still a god in my book. Um, guys, Bull Bull, he's just amazing. He's just amazing. He's a big man with a jump shot. He'll block everything that comes his way. He's got an incredible skill set. He, he can... I, I, it's bull bull. He's by far and away my favorite prospect in this class. And to anyone who says he's one-dimensional, you're wrong, and I hate you. Because he's not. He can step outside. He can make the three. He can dunk it in your face. He will yam it on your face, as Aaron says. Um, really, <laughs> and he, he he just he blocks everything. There's no downside to Bull Bull. I don't care. Make your arguments, guys. I Go ahead. Uh, he's drawn a lot of comparisons to uh, Kevin Durant. I don't think that's out of line at all. And the only problem though with a guy of that size is his knees and his back mm -hmm. are gonna uh, they're yeah. gonna wear down quicker than a lot of other guys. And I think that's really uh, his only potential handicap down the line. Like you said, he can do it all. Uh, one kind of concern, one thing I've noticed from him, he's got a, he does have a great shot, but he has an oddly low release point. And That's it's just because he's, he's never, be he's never had though. to worry it. Well, he's never had to worry about that at the level he's been playing at. Cause the sure. tallest guys he's going up against are maybe six ten, you know, and he doesn't have to worry about that. But once you're getting up to the next level, you know, to college, maybe it won't affect him as much, but to the NBA, that's going to be a problem. He needs to he needs to have a higher release point if he really wants you know to what? progress that shot. He needs to look at his dad's tape. You know his dad shot over 200 threes in the NBA? Yeah, I did a know seven, that. A 7 foot 7 dude. <laughs> and he shot 91 of them in a season. That was just nuts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean watching Manute Bull's three point shot. There that that is literally impossible to uh to block. Um you would need a ladder to block Manute Bull's three-point shot. So, yeah, uh, definitely, you know, low low, re bleh, low release point. But, you know, we've seen odd releases like that. I say if you mess with it too much, it's going to mess with his game. Um, you know, I, I we'll see how it works at the college level. But, again, he's he's 7'2". Um, you don't see 
jump shots get blocked that often and a guy of his stature i think he'll be just fine so um aaron what were your thoughts about bull bull basically what bragan said i like he's very versatile he can score in a variety of ways that's my biggest thing Mm -hmm. um surprisingly he can take you off the dribble um i knew he could take you off the dribble i this was actually the first time i've actually watched tape on bull bull to be honest okay um he can take you off the dribble pretty well, actually. Yeah, and for I was, a big man his size, yeah, absolutely. I was very surprised with that. Um, he can score any way he wants. He can block. He, he has a long enough wingspan to where he can block shots. Um, he can block everything. <laughs> Captain well, Obvious over here, he can block everything, man. Should be, should be able to. Should be able to, yes. Never um, block me, though. Of course. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Tell your story now. <laughs> oh, my God. I, know, I, I, I know, almost forgot. I know that you're in love with the story. And uh, <laughs> I wish I could hype it up to the point where it sounded really cool. But unfortunately, it's not. But Alex is in love with it. Well, because it's Bull Bull and it's Alex. But um, Bull Bull, actually, uh, I did play a pickup game with him once when he was going to school here in Kansas. Uh, he went to two different high schools over here, both of which I had friends from. Ended up meeting up with him, played one pickup game against him. Pretty sure we lost. Don't remember. I'm just going to assume so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the only thing I really remember about it, and hell, he was probably a freshman in high school at the time. This was a few years ago. But the only thing I really remember about him is he was he didn't he knew he could just dunk on everybody at will. So he was just working on his jump shot and I, I did respect that, that he wasn't just destroying us <laughs> like he see, knew and that's that he the could. thing. Like you don't ever see a guy his size score at all three levels. But Bull Bull no. is completely comfortable scoring at all three levels. That is I mean, he is he's a marvel to watch. He's un undefendable. So it's it's all on him and his shot, you know. I mean like I don't know how you mess with a guy like that. And and to the point about the knees, um, I mean, he's only 230. He's keeping his weight relatively down for his size. He could be a lot bigger. Um, you know, his dad was a twig. I mean, his dad, I think, was 7'7", seven, seven, 200. That's unhealthy. Um, you know, so I, I'd say Bull Bull has a great build. Um, and I am incredibly, incredibly excited to see him play at the next level. Um, I'm going to have to get the Oregon television package to watch every Oregon game. Uh, but I, I'm all about the Ducks this season, man. This is wow. Wow, wow, wow. Bull Bull. It can never hurt to put on to put on some pounds, especially. I mean, he, he does have – he has great footwork, great post game. Yep. Uh, he's a great finesse finisher too. But, you know, you really should do what you can to pack on the pounds. And I know genetically that's not – going to be easy for him looking at his father but um you know putting on an extra 15 pounds of muscle will definitely help Help down the stretch yeah any other thoughts um no basically what you guys said i saw him bringing up the ball at seven two i was like holy hell it's so fun to watch (laughs) isn't it it's intimidating it is. Yeah. You, you have a 7-2 center bring the ball up against you. You're like, what am I going to do? <laughs> it's so fun to watch, dude. I can't wait to see him play. And, uh, I mean, I you know, easy lottery pick next year, right? Like, easy. More than likely, I yeah. mean, yeah. we thought that Michael Porter Jr. was an easy lottery pick. And, you That's know, fair. He got, he got okay. hurt and, you know, didn't come back as strong and just a lot MPJ, of health concerns. MPJ is kind of coming off kind of arrogant. I told you about that the other day, Bregan, to me. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it, and I'm not going to talk about it. Well, I will say that MPJ <laughs> was not seven two and could not, uh, you know, shoot a three as seven two. Well, him so being seven two could that. hurt him a little bit more though if he has an injury like that. You know, it, yeah, it could it can. if it he can. has a I back mean, or a leg. Injury, look what happened then. to Joel Embiid. He still went three with chronic back issues, and it's paying off for him every it is couple seasons. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to move on here. Um, another Oregon uh, recruit, um, Lewis King, uh, another five star. Uh, I believe Oregon has. Yeah, Oregon has two of these. A lot of five stars in the Pac-12. There's so much talent in this conference. Lewis King, he's a 6'8", 195 small forward uh, from Jersey City, New Jersey. 
He's ranked 20th by 24-7, 11th by ESPN. And uh, I will kick it to you guys to start this off. What did you think about Lewis King? Um, oh. I like. Go ahead, Brigham. Oh, you go for it. He he seemed very smooth when he was scoring. He can score at all three levels. Um, he's six eight one ninety five. So, in a lot of his game, like I said, he's very smooth, but he plays physical also. Mm-hmm. He's gonna get he's gonna get eaten alive at six eight one ninety five. Um, what do you on mean? The, on the team website, he's up to two hundred five. However, okay. He, how, he, how can a guy his size get eaten alive? That's what I'm curious about. He's going to play the forum in college, more than likely. Eh, is he though? It's in between. It's going to be. Okay. It'll be a three or four. But yeah, yeah. I mean, he I mean, could, he I could agree play with stretch four. I, I, I agree with Aaron four. though. I mean, it. He is going to get eaten alive if he's playing. He's a very physical player. And yeah, that's yeah. great. You know, in high school when the kids aren't as big as they are in college. But, you know, he's going to need to pack on some weight if he wants to play as physically and, uh, you know, is he wanted, you know play is the he same game that he school? wants to play. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. You know who he reminded me a ton of just watching his film? Hmm. Like a smaller, slightly smaller Cam Reddish. A Cam Reddish was the same type of player. I mean, just a like a do-everything guy um, who can create his own shot anywhere on the floor. Um, I mean, Cam Reddish is more polished, obviously, but, um, you know, King, he's, he's tall and lengthy, uh, he's very athletic and he can play any position on the floor. He likely will be, you know, a stretch for, um, I, I doubt that they'll use his skill set for just a, a catch and shoot three guy, um, no. but he's he, in high school, he was a do everything three. Um, and I think he'll excel at the next level. He's going to have to adjust to that four spot though. Um, so there might be a bit of a transition period there, but um, just a, a, a super talented guy who can do a lot of things well, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, <laughs> I w- turned down the tape, and I'm like, am I watching Cam Reddish? You know, so uh, it's a good comparison, I guess. Um, yeah, I, have, I liked yeah. him. I liked him. The, he he's going to be. I think he's going to be a two three year guy more than likely. Really? Be- yeah, I I think so because. He does things well, but in order to make it to the next level, um, he's going to need a showcase that, uh, granted, he could play the three in college and be fine, but I think he's, his play style, he's such a physical player, his play style is more suited for the four, a small ball four, and he could excel, he could excel in, at the small ball four in the league, excel. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. Because I'll say that Go ahead. he he probably should be uh, a two year guy at least. Yeah. But you know, as the matter of will he? Uh, probably not. It's usually. That's kind of that's kind of the problem with a lot of these kids. But that's you know, especially story. especially with the with yeah. the rule change. You know, if he decides that's to start with an agent and everything, well, and he you know he goes gets drafted, then you know he's just something stay. something to note yeah. about that. Um, I don't know if we touched on this. It won't officially get um, this this these new rules won't get put in place until the NBA Players Association and the NBA approves it. And there's words that that won't happen until 2021. I think. Really. Yeah. As hmm. far as the agents thing go? As, as far as all of this, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, w- I wasn't positive uh, what was going on with that. What about the high schoolers, though? It's all like, in the I, same It's all in the same contract, so... Really? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Well, well then. yeah, and, and again, they're going to have to talk to each other, which I, <laughs> the NCAA has made it very clear we don't want to talk to the NBA. We just want to tell the NBA what to do, and the NBA is like, uh-uh, you ain't doing that. You ain't doing that. So... <laughs> That's uh, pretty much how that went down. Um, I do right. have three points I want to make about King, though, before we oh, go for it. Uh, uh, move on. Close it out. Uh, just, just three things that kind of stood out to me. Um, his ball handling. I noticed mm-hmm. when he tries to he tries to do too much, and he a lot of time just kind of loses control. He really needs to work on controlling his ball handling more, and maybe he really just shouldn't even be a – a primary ball handler on any team, which he was uh, in high school. 
Mm-hmm. Another it thing probably won't be. I mean, in, in no, college, no, so no. that's that fixes that. But that's still something that needs to be brushed sure. up with, especially mm-hmm. for uh, NBA aspirations. Another thing was he has a very slow release on his shot, and that's something that's easily fixable and something that can be approved upon. But it's something that's kind of stuck out to me, and I just I don't think it'll be too much of a issue, but it. If you can improve on that, then that could really uh, help elevate his game. Okay. And then I noticed he doesn't box out at all, ever. I, I didn't. I watched a few full games of him, and I think I saw him truly box out guys one time. You know, he just kind of he just kind of does his own thing, and that's something fundamentally speaking that he needs to needs to work on. Do you think a little bit of that was that he was so dominant in high school and he didn't need to box out? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And that's okay. what you see with a lot of these guys is that they sure. you know, they start to lose the the fundamentals just because they don't, you know, necessarily have to because they're so dominant at their level. But he's going to be humbled very quickly if he continues to play exactly the same way he's been playing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, um, we're going to move on here. Bregan, I'm going to kick it to you. Is there one of these uh, next nine guys that really stood out to you, someone that you just can't wait to talk about and can't hold it in? Uh, I really kind of <laughs> like uh, Brandon Williams. Brandon from Williams. Arizona. Okay. Let's um, go ahead and move on to him. 6'2", 185 point guard, four star from Encino, California. Ranked 34th by 24 7, 39th by ESPN. What'd you see with Brandon Williams at uh, Bregan? Uh, he is, you know, he's what, 6'2, 185, right? Yes, sir. I notice he has a lot of good post moves, good footwork down low, which isn't something that you see from from guys his size. But he does like, he really likes to get physical and bang down low and uh, post guys up. And I think that's, I, I think that's pretty great. Uh, he's not much of a three point shooter, though. I think he only hit twenty six percent or something like that from three in his senior year. I'll I'll have to look that again, but uh, no, not really, a, not really much of a shooter. But he's just a very, he's a team player. You know, if he doesn't have the ball in his hands, he's always moving, setting screens, trying to get his other teammates open. He's he's a very team oriented guy. Uh, he crashes the boards. He always likes to run through the offensive sets. He doesn't like to play the ISO ball as much. He you know he runs through the offensive sets. Really, just likes to set up teammates over anything else. And, you know, I, uh, I oh, sorry. I, I'm just saying that. Just those were the things that really stuck out to me that I was very impressed by because it's not something that you see with with these top recruits anymore. Yeah, for sure. He was he was very team oriented. I'll give you that. Um, I did see a game where he uh, he put up 52 points, and in that game, he was a one man offense. He was draining them uh, from deep, and they were just like not even hitting the rim swish 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 so he, he was just on fire that day so I noticed he has that ability to be a one-man offense but he also is such a good facilitator that he doesn't really need to do that so I don't anticipate him uh, being a one-man offense in college um, but that's not to say he can't hit a clutch shot every now and then um, but yeah I, I noticed the same thing uh, he's he's very very solid point guard a uh, good defender as well. Um, I, a guy who I was looking at and I saw this is right up Aaron's alley. So Aaron, go ahead. Tell me what you liked. Um, basically what you guys said, I, he's a good all around point guard. Um, and those are the guys I, I like. Those are the guys I like. He can score all three levels. His three point shot does need work. Yeah. Um, I like point guards that play defense, and this guy fits that bill. He's going to be one of those guys with – how do I put this? <laughs> Nicely. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! That's how I'd put it. Thanks. Appreciate that. I, it's not like I've heard <laughs> that before. <laughs> Haven't you? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you done messed up, A.A. Move, move it along. Um, Come on. No, got that's words? – that's basically it. I like I like him. He's a good all-around point guard. Um, he's going to be fun to watch next year. He's not going to blow you away. That's my biggest thing. I like guys that won't blow you away, but they will do all the little things to. <laughs> you don't like being blown away. Stop. No, I'm just I'm I'm honestly curious. Like I'm blown away by Ball Ball. That's the most exciting thing for me. I'm, I'm with this. Aaron on this. 
that okay. jump out that right. jump out at you that I don't like the overly flashy guys exactly like that, that's that are, what I'm know, getting everybody's at. taking notice of you know he's okay. he's just one of those guys that's fallen under the radar but sure. has the potential to does everything uh, well really does do. all the little things will, will help your team win a game okay one thing that I did notice that concerned me is when he's passing the ball inside he just he tries to thread the needle a little bit too much and that mm-hmm. was a reason for a majority of his turnovers mm-hmm. um you know, he's just, he tries to force a lot of passes inside. Well, yeah, that's something he can work on. And, you know, Sean Miller can uh, um, slip him a couple bills to make him uh, a better passer. So. <laughs> I was right. waiting for that. I was yeah, waiting yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a joke on Sean Miller. Sorry, Arizona fans. It's all fun. <laughs> um, but, Both yeah, he's a, he's a really solid offensive guard. He can do a lot of things well. Um, he's he's going to be fun to watch for sure. Um Aaron, I'm going to kick it to you. Any guys that stand out that you want to talk about next? Um, let me think. Okay, I'll talk about one guy I didn't like. Um, All right, we can go that route. Moses Brown. What? what? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm, yeah. What? No. This I'm, is gonna be, I'm with, this is I'm gonna with be you. The, I'm the world against. Oh, my God. I'm, nothing, yeah, I was not born. Go on. Him. Nothing about him stood out to me. He does. What about his height? He's seven foot tall. That's fine. That's fine and dandy. That's very fine and dandy. But Since at the when same, is seven foot fine. <laughs> he still That's gets. I... He still gets bullied. He, he does. can't be seven feet, and he, he was getting bullied by guys that weren't even. That's the thing. His size. And one of the other things I noticed, it, this might just be me, but it seems like he moves in slow motion. It mm-hmm. might just be me though. Um. For the next couple of years, he, he's not – he. if he comes out after one year, he's going to be very disappointed. I'm just saying that right now as far as where he gets drafted. He needs – he's more of a project than people think. Um, he's going to be a good shot blocker for a year or two and a cleanup guy. I saw some good face-up skills. Um, nothing about him blew me away though as far as I, – I expect that from these five-star guys. Um he played with Cole Anthony and that Clemson kid la- that we did a couple weeks ago. I forget his name, but he, they they were all on the same team up in New York. Who's so, Cole Anthony? Um, <laughs> he's Greg Anthony's son and the top level point guard coming out of high school next oh, year. Oh, is he? He's in the nineteenth class, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. His, about his footwork's just, atrocious. Yeah. It's just awful. I mean, there's. <laughs> plenty of times where I saw him trying to make moves in the post and he'd take four steps without them actually saying anything, which I suppose nowadays is, you know, pretty standard, standard because, practice. you know, <laughs> screw fundamentals and screw rules, right? Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. But, yeah, it his is, footwork is just awful. I think, I just, I just really think he's going to be a project for um, Steve Alford. He, I don't, I don't see it. I just don't see it. <laughs> God, I, I, don't, I don't either. What, what case do you have to make, Alex? I, what do you I just see? feel like we we watch completely completely <laughs> different tape. You know, it's it's weird. Okay, now I'm gonna preface it with this: I am not a basketball scout. If if I were to go to basketball scouts in among among the mod squad, uh, Bregan and Aaron are, are two guys that I trust. I do not trust myself to scout these guys. This is why. Now, but this is why I hire co-hosts who don't get paid and they're not really hired. So anyway, um, waiting for that check. By the way, <laughs> you know. The weird thing, I mean, he's he's seven foot two ten. Um, you know, he's he's a top fifteen recruit from ESPN. He's ranked twenty twenty seventh by twenty four seven. One thing I did like is that his AAU team was called New Heights. I yeah. thought that was a pleasant irony because he literally towers over all his competition. That's the tape I saw. Um, <laughs> I saw the tape where he dominated, where he was a gigantic man who can block people without leaving the ground. Um, he's a really good defender, good low post finisher, and I I, I loved his post moves. I thought they were above average. Um, he, he's a seven know, footer. He's gonna dominate in high school. Yeah, he's he's at least two inches taller than most guys he's going up against. Isn't That's, that gonna be the same thing in in college as well? Like you don't see a ton of seven footers anymore, guys. It's not the nineties. No, you you're know? right. Um, but in the Pac-12, he's going to be, be going up against Bull Bull. He's um, exactly, and I can't wait to see that matchup because Bull Bull <laughs> obviously has the versatility. Um, you know, Bull and Bull's he's going to Bull Bull's going to eat him alive. I he's absolutely be Bull agree. Bull. 
I, I, <laughs> dang Plain it. simple. Oh, you can bleep that out. It. I don't even care. That I, needed to be I, said. We made it. And it's true. It. Tell me five. I'm wrong. You're not. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Five episodes without. Uh, you're not. You're not. Okay. We made it five Thank episodes you. without swearing. If you guys haven't noticed, we've been trying to be PG on here. I'm going to have to bleep rag it out there. But dang it. We, we were pretty good, weren't we? Um, I, it anyway. needed to be said. I needed to put you in your place. Go ahead. All right. No, I, I agree with you. You didn't even give me a chance. I totally agree with you. But, um, yeah, like, he, Bull is going to school Moses Brown, but that's not to say Moses Brown is a bad player. It's to say that Bull Bull is by far and away better, a better big man than Moses Brown. Um, but, again, I think Moses Brown is going to be just fine because he's humongous, and he can play his role well. He's not versatile, but he's seven foot, and he's you know gonna stand there in the paint and be seven foot. I don't see he's what a, the problem is with having a specialty player like that. I think he's at least a three year project. Yeah, I, I I tend to agree about that. If he comes out, if he comes out after one year, he's gonna he's stupid. I'm sorry. I I don't even want to give you my because I, I have a <laughs> I have a comp to him, but again, it just feels stupid now. Go ahead, let me hear it. I I watched him and I I was reminded of Deontay Davis. Deontay Davis. Oh, the Michigan, From Michigan State guy. State. Yeah. I didn't watch him that much. That was while I was in the Marine Corps, so I didn't get a chance to watch a lot, a lot of college hoops. I know he's not doing well. This is fair to say, he's not doing crap in the pros right now. After leaving, well, after he left one year. My my comp, I guess, was uh, you know watching Deontay Davis high school tape. Again, I turn on Moses Brown's high school tape. And I turn on Deonta Davis's high school tape. It's very similar, um, you know, just dominant big men in the paint who were, you know, uh, now, good, post, one thing, good post moves and, and big dunkers. You know, one thing also is big man. He, he he has a face up game, so I'm not going straightly at him. But big men are going away from back to the basket. Um, yeah, a lot of the big men nowadays are like Bull Bull. They're versatile. They're Bull. I I, me- I mentioned this. Bull Bull is a perfect blueprint of how big men should be nowadays. Or absolutely, um, and I feel like Moses Brown d- did have a little bit of a face-up game. I did notice that he doesn't have much, but he did have some. I just feel like he needs to work on. He needs to fine-tune a lot of his game. And th- on UCLA, they're going to have a very, they're going to have a very raw and talented team next year. They have one junior. Two sophomores, Jalen Hands and Chris Wilkes, and they have Sharif O'Neal, who we're going to touch on, and that kid who, um, who, who was it? Um, Leangelo's buddy from China. The, he's going to be on the team next year. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't think of his name either, but I know who you're talking. Cody about. Riley. That's what it was. There you go, Cody Riley. Okay. Well, yeah. I think we've touched enough on Moses Brown. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to kick it to a, a guy who I thought was underwhelming, which I'm, I'm really disappointed in. And if you guys if you guys cream me, it is what it is. I'm going to get creamed on this show, I guess. Uh, Sharif O'Neal. I was actually pretty disappointed in him. Um, you got Shaq's son to live up to. That's it's never a title you're going to shake. Um, but 6'9", 205, power forward, four-star, Santa Monica, California, uh, ranked 41 by 24 7, 32 by ESPN. Sharif O'Neal, a guy I was really excited about, obviously, because of uh, the surname. But I turned on the tape, and he's you know he's a 6'9 guy, but he doesn't really have um, – his post moves are, like, pretty underwhelming, I thought. Um, and his defense was, like, not there. Um, it, was, it was really, like, he didn't even care. He would let guys blow past him. He didn't really give much of an effort. I don't know if he even cares about playing defense. I just didn't see it. But on offense, he's a very electric player, um, and he projects to be a stretch for in college and in the pros, um, but he's still a bit raw overall. Um, he's gotten far based on his size thus far and probably his name, but I still think he needs a lot of work. Um, I think it would be a mistake for Sharif to be a one-and-done guy. So um, what are you guys' thoughts about Sharif? I I agree about yeah. uh, what you said about him defensively. You know, he's he's very I don't know. He just doesn't seem to have his head in it. But mm-hmm. offensively, he's I mean, he's aggressive. He just he just plays with a lot of heart. 
which I mm-hmm. really like. You know, he just, you I can agree. tell he just, he really loves being out there. He's, you know, he just, he feeds off of everyone else's energy too. And he's not going to be ready to start right away. It might take no. a couple years, but I do think he does have a high ceiling. He just needs to, he needs to improve his offensive efficiency overall. But, I mean, look at him. He's already a better shooter than his dad ever was. <laughs> I mean, I heard he's been owning Shaq and Horse since he was four. So. <laughs> Oh man, you, you know I, like I think uh, I think Shaq uh, actually shot like twenty somewhere in the range of twenty four three pointers. He made one, and it was like a three quarter court buzzer beater. Um, but that's uh, yeah. So Sharif will have him very quickly in the NBA three point uh, department. It won't take him long at all. But he's definitely more of a shooter than his dad ever was, no doubt. Uh, but yeah, I, I saw a guy who was who was pretty raw. Um, Aaron, what were your thoughts? I agree. Um, I liked how he. On offense, like Bregan said, he plays with a lot of heart. He plays above the rim. He he's a typical combo four. He can he's more than likely to play the four, but he can play the three in some sets. Um, he he has a good skill set for his size. I noticed. Now, like Bregan said, he's gonna need to put on some. He's gonna need to put on some weight. Obviously, coming out of high school, like we say with a lot of these guys, um, his first year he might not make a huge impact. But by his third, fourth year, he'll be – if he stays, that is, which he should. Key Definitely. word is should. Um, by his third, fourth year, I think he, he will be one of the better players in the Pac-12, if not the NCAA. Um, we'll see as far as how he progresses. His defense does need work. But granted, in high school, he's one of the better offensive players. He, he might not have cared on defense. And who's the coach out there? Steve Alford? Yes. It's on Steve Alford to get him to play defense. That's all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or whoever and his, their next coach is. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah I was going to say. He's on the hot seat. <laughs> he's on the hot seat because he's bringing in all this talent and they aren't doing anything. So, yeah. Yeah. Can we talk um, about one thing with him, though? And sure. it's not even about his game. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Well, because he signed with UCLA three days oh, yeah. after he decommitted from Arizona. Can we talk yes. about that a little bit? I mean, sure. Go ahead. Well, I know Aaron. You're you're very <laughs> on top of things with recruiting. I just kind of wanted to hear your your um, thoughts on that and what was well, going reason, down before. The reason he decommitted from Arizona was because of the whole Sean Miller thing. Yep. Um, the whole Sean Miller thing came out, and I don't blame him for decommitting. He was probably like, I don't want to be there because they're gonna get some sanctions put on them, and that was the that was the consensus consensus at that point in time. Exactly. And. Why he chose UCLA? Probably because he's a Cali kid. Um, I couldn't tell you. But, yeah, that's about all I have as far as that. It was just, it was just very quick, you know. It was. And it, 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 it stuck out because, you know, let me just check. heard that he would decommitted. Then all of a sudden, like, oh, no, he's with UCLA now. And it just kind of, it he kind of stuck out to me. He committed in, like, March, I think, to UCLA. That was yeah. It was right after the the Sean Miller stuff. And again, you're you're right. We all thought that Arizona was going to get shafted by the NCAA, and it's 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 reasonable why they lost um, Sharif and others uh, during that time. Um, it was sort of quick uh, turnaround. I know Bull Bull was trying to get Sharif to come to Oregon, um, you know, because they're good buddies. Um, but. Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure why, but again, uh, I think he's a Southern California kid, um, so maybe he just thought uh, I'll take this opportunity to stay closer to home. So, yeah, that's more than likely what it is. Kentucky was on the radar too, but I think he wanted to stay home. That Arizona's close to home too for him, so he probably wanted to stay as close close to home as he as he could. Well, that's that's my best assessment as far mm-hmm. as that. Yep. All right. So uh, let's just say let's uh, just close out UCLA. Um, we're going to talk Jules Bernard, um, 6'6", 190 shooting guard, four star from Los Angeles, California. Uh, top 50 guy uh, from ESPN, 55 by 24 uh, 7. Jules Bernard, um, talented guy. <laughs> what's what's the uh, what's the side for, Bregan? Being a very. Uh fundamentally sound player myself 
it just it hurt my brain watching this kid. It really did. It, <laughs> it didn't just hurt okay. my brain. It I felt it in my soul. Just I've I don't think I've seen a lower basketball IQ of any top one hundred recruit in my entire life. I mean, it was okay. oh God, man. He just it's just he does stupid things constantly. He doesn't know how to switch off of picks on defense. I mean, it, there is so many times where his guy would just get left wide open because he doesn't even know what the hell's going on. <laughs> um, he doesn't value the ball at all. I mean, not even a little bit. He'll just throw it up wherever he wants. You know, they like, oh, go. My teammates double covered over here. I'm still gonna throw it to him. I mean, it's. I I, I can't even. I I can't even wrap my mind around where he's where his mind is during these games. He just doesn't he just he's in another he's on another planet. One thing one thing I know you notice, Brigan, he doesn't finish with his right. Nope. Yep. I, I noticed that right away. He does not finish with his right at all. He's strictly left he he only finishes with his left and that's gonna get him killed. Um, offensively, uh, did you, no, I, I just wanted to, just yeah. wanted to ask because, um, I, I'm not a huge fan of Jules Bernard. I'm really not, but offensively, um, did you respect his game at all, Reagan, as far as, as far as a solo, if you were to play Jules Bernard one-on-one, would he, or would he not win 99% of the time? If I were to play him? Well, I guess okay. I mean, let me <laughs> who, let me rephrase who, this. Who is Could he going he, up against? <laughs> okay, let's let's put him against the whole UCLA roster. Uh, what's his win percentage? One on one. One on one, I'd give him the nod against most of the guys, probably. See, uh, and I would too. He's got he has a great pump fake. That was something that not a lot of people usually catch, but I kind of noticed that right away. He got a, he got guys to jump a lot in games. Um, he has a respectable shot. I think he hit 36, 37% from three last year. Um, and he offensively, I'm, I don't hate him entirely outside of the fact that he just throws the ball away and yeah, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, what, what I noticed is he, he was a very one man offense. He was a great shot creator and he had, Good court vision, uh, I thought, but apparently Bregan doesn't think that. Um, so I'll listen to Bregan on that one. Go for it. But um, you know, he's he's really not much of a passer. Yet I didn't see um, in his highlight tapes, uh, you know, hardly any passing. Um, and it's not it's not that he's not a good offensive player because he's a great offensive player. Um, I think one on one, he's probably one of the better people uh, I saw in the Pac-12. But you have to be more of a team player in college, and you can't just dominate um, just because you think you can. So uh, defensively, I didn't see uh, much. He's okay at best, but uh, he he played very selfishly um, from what I saw, and I don't know. Um, Good offensive guy might just be – I I think his best role probably would be uh, just to – you know, be a two and, uh, you know, catch and shoot and drive when he has opportunities, but he's got to work on his facilitating as well. I could see him just with his play style. I could see him going after one year. Possibly. I mean, you, you imagine that, uh, unless Alford brings him in, he's going to try to shoot 20 times a game. Oh, that's definitely. Just the kind of guy he is. Yeah, there, so. I did notice a few times, you know, where he was being double teamed and he just decided he wanted to take it himself and right. ended up getting <laughs> stripped. That happened a few times. But he's a, he does finish uh, incredibly well through contact. I will give him that. It's probably because he sees only, a lot of it because they with, home in on him. Only with his left hand, though. That's the thing. <laughs> only with his left hand. He, he didn't really feel the need to I didn't to see right. anything with his right hand. That's the thing. I... I can say the same thing for uh, Elijah Weaver, though. The yeah, kid that signed uh, with we're USC. Gonna t- we're going to touch on him. I didn't like him either. <laughs> let's just go to Elijah right, Weaver, let's then. Let's go with him, then. What, what did right. you see from him, too, Aaron? Um, I didn't get a lot on him, but I noticed he likes to attack the rim. He's a pure point guard, likes to set up teammates. But like you said, it was nothing really caught me 
caught me said, hey, this guy's going to be great because that's what I expect from Elijah Weaver coming to USC. What do you see? Uh, Real quick, yes, Elijah Weaver, USC, um, their second best recruit, I would say. 6'4", 195 combo guard. He's, you said he's a he's a good pure point guard. Um, he he is solid. Uh, he's a solid spot up shooter. So I wouldn't I wouldn't knock his shooting ability entirely. He's got great court vision. Uh, I feel like he's just always he's just kind of playing at a different speed than everyone else on the court. You know, he he knows what's going to happen before it happens, and mm-hmm. a lot of times, you know, a lot of his turnovers came from his teammates just weren't even weren't even ready for the passes he was throwing out and he was you know he was just seeing it before they were and making great plays but his teammates were just kind of a step behind him uh Mm -hmm. he's got strong hands he goes hard on rebounds doesn't let anybody knock the ball away from him and i do like that he's just a very uh hard-nosed blue collar type of uh point guard blue collar right up your alley of course so um (laughs) but elijah weaver i will say uh very unselfish player. I was pretty impressed by him. Great passer, great scorer. Um, I agree with you, Reagan. I, I saw a pretty high basketball IQ. Always seemed to make the right play. Definitely seemed like he was a step ahead of everyone else. Quick-witted guy. Takes smart shots, smart shots when he's open. Um, high energy, both on offense and defense. Um, and he was a back-to-back state champ in high school, which never hurts anything. So uh, USC, Andy Enfield, uh, getting a pretty good class in and continuing to get good classes in, even a 19 class. Uh, that 19 class is stack, yeah. Got one of the top 19 classes. Uh, you have to imagine Elijah Weaver is a guy who's going to stay on. Um, is there anything else we wanted to say there, or should we move on to Kevin Porter? I'm good. Okay. Well, let, let's talk Kevin Porter. That's USC's number one recruit, 6'5", 210 shooting guard. Uh, he is – now, this is a little weird. He's a five-star by 24-7. He's ranked 28th. Uh, ESPN ranked him as a four star. He's 40th on ESPN. So a little bit of a discrepancy there. Um, for Kevin Porter, Andy, Andy Enfield, um, uh, quoted as saying, Kevin is a very dynamic scorer and passer. He's a terrific athlete and has the unique ability to avoid the defense and make plays for his teammates. And I agree. Uh, he can, he can score with ease. It looks very easy when he's out there. Um, and those are the kind of guys I look to make for a big impact at the next level is the ones who dominate in high school. And sometimes they don't even go a hundred percent, but it's not the ones who are, you know, so lazy that you, you can tell Kevin Porter has all the offensive skills needed to succeed. Um, he's a very gifted player. Um, and I, I really enjoyed watching the tape on him. So Aaron, uh, what did you see from Porter? Um, he can score at all three levels. He has the ability and the, he, he's very good it creating his own shot and creating separation. He has good handle. Like you said, he knows how to set up his teammates. Um, his jump. I like his jumper. Also, his jumper seemed fluid. It seemed smooth. Um, I, I liked him. He, he, I watched some of his drew league games and granted, that's not something you should be watching, but <laughs> it's tape. It, it is. All counts. He, um, he was doing a lot of, a lot of the thing. There was one game he got thrown out in, actually, but I liked what really? he did. Yeah. <laughs> what did he do? Him and another player got in a fight. I forget his name. Or they oh. started bickering or whatever. I, I, it's the Drew League. I'm not reading too much into it. Sure, um, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I liked his ability to create se- separation. The, his ability to create separation was the biggest thing for me. Um, is okay. it? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you go. Go ahead. Uh, I think Aaron covered a lot of what I was thinking. I did notice... When it came to, you know, you guys are really impressed with his passing, apparently. Um, I think he was all right. He did have a tendency to to stare down the guys he was throwing to, though, and I could see that causing problems for him. That was probably the biggest thing I noticed. He's, I mean, he's an elite scorer. Uh, he's just kind of had that me-first mentality, it kind of seemed like. But I think working with Andy Enfield, who's a very teamwork-oriented coach, I think he'll be, I think he'll be good. I am so impressed with what Andy Enfield done to because USC was a basketball, um, a basketball hell for a lot of years, yeah. and coming off uh, you know a, a magical run at Florida Gulf Coast and going to a program like USC, you know the expectations are going to be raised and he just he didn't skip a beat. Um, 
very, very impressed with Andy Enfield and what he's done and what he continues to do. Um, you know, credit to USC and their athletic staff for, for recognizing a guy who can lead their program back to prominence. Um, pretty impressed. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, let's talk. Cormac oh, yeah. Ryan. Cormac, Cormac Ryan. Ryan. All right. Cormac Ryan. <laughs> you you uh, like him. You like him. BK, I do like him. Uh, I, I, I do too. <laughs> Cormac Ryan. Uh, he's a Stanford kid, 6'5", 175 combo guard from Milton, Massachusetts, uh, ranked 65th by ESPN, 68th by 24-7. Tell us what you like, BK. He's just another one of those uh, do it on both sides of the ball kind of kids, you know. He yep. he does he never takes plays off. Uh, he's just he's just going one hundred percent all the time, which I can respect. Uh, he's got long arms, so he can play the passing lanes really well. Um, his his stroke from behind the arc is just really what kind of blew me away. It's mm-hmm. he just yeah. has one of the purest shots I've I've ever seen. It's 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 a thing of beauty. It really is. Um, he's not great at attacking the rim. But he really shouldn't have to be just with the way that he shoots, because he can he can shoot off the dribble, he can shoot off the catch. There's there's nowhere that he can't shoot from really on the court. Aaron, yeah, he can shoot the shit out of the ball. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! Do you have to That's cut two that? bleeps? Yeah, okay. he can. Go ahead. Yeah, he can shoot the ball. Um. He, he can create his own shot also. That's one thing I know is from beyond the arc. Um, he did show some point guard skills, and that's one thing that did I did like. He showed he showed some, not a lot, but he did show he has the ability to play point, and that's going to be key for him moving forward. Um, basically, yeah, basically what Brigham said, he has long arms. He, I did notice he was able to put the floor, ball on the floor and attack sometimes, mm-hmm. but his primary... His primary ob- objective is to shoot the ball. That's very clear. He can, he can pull it from anywhere and shoot it. it. It's it's a thing, like you said, it's a thing of beauty to watch, and it's really fun. I, he's I just think a scrawny he's, little thing, too. He is. That's kind of... <laughs> it's funny, his build, he's, he's very lanky and lengthy, and you don't see that in a lot of guards, but he is, I, I got to say, I was really impressed, too. Um, fits the combo guard mold very well because he does have the point guard skills. And he does have uh, the great stroke of a shooting guard who needs to, you know, help the point guard out and, and be the backcourt mate. He can play either one. Uh, it's it's very good. He's got a great, complete skill set. He's a sharp shooter from the outside. I, I agree. One of the better shooters um, in the class, probably. Uh, he's a good passer as well. Moves with ease on the court. Uh, and he's a tremendous ball handler. Uh, above average defender. And one thing I really liked, uh, his AAU coach, um, well, okay, I didn't, I didn't like this so much, but um, I just like the quote. AAU coach uh, compared him to the skill set of Grayson Allen with the competitiveness of Danny Ainge. That's okay. pretty scary. <laughs> That's pretty scary if that turns out to be true. That's just wrong. That is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's dead wrong. I mean, just th- let's just throw out any two white guys, and yep, sounds about right. Sure, sure. I mean, that's really how it is. <laughs> I know, I know, I get it. Um, but Cormac Ryan, very fun to watch. Um, the kind of guy who can make a huge impact is Stanford, um, and he's probably pretty underrated. You know, they got him in the 60s here. I think we all think highly of him um, and above that 60 stat uh, for sure. So excited to see Cormac Ryan. Glad we put him on here. White privilege, my ass. Yeah, you can cut that part out. I just had to say it. <laughs> you can cut okay. that out. I wanted to wait till you were talking, but I just felt the need to say that. <laughs> well, now we're going to have to get the bleep machine in here. It's all good. We're all, good. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's move on to a guy I really liked. Um, surprisingly, now, when I made my top 10 list, I did not put this guy on here. And it's, it's a shame because I really didn't. Um, like him because of he he went to Arizona State. He committed to Arizona State. Let's talk Lugens Dort. Um, I I just am not impressed with uh, what Bobby Hurley or Dan Bobby Hurley. Yes, Bobby Hurley. I wasn't One sure of the Hurleys. Or, I wasn't sure if it was Dan or Bobby. Dan's at, they, uh, they stole they UConn. stole two Nebraska assistants. They're not they're oh not welcome God. here. <laughs> More like belongs in the trash. <laughs> That's what you get. Okay. 
Um, okay, but I'll shut Lugent's up. <laughs> door, uh, a guy who I was disappointed that I left left off my list after I watched the tape on him. 6'4", 200 shooting guard, four star from Toronto, Ontario, uh, ranked thirtieth by twenty four seven, and ESPN throwing shade on the man, not yeah, ranking him. You saw that too. I noticed that throwing some shade. I was. I didn't know if that was a error or not that was i, I agree i don't understand that but I don't there has know to be something behind no. it was... one reason i think is don't quote me on this but i believe he was a postgraduate like he went to a skills academy for his year okay that could be why i didn't look too much into that but i did notice post under his high school so granted that, that... could be because i remember something about he went to some sort of academy so it definitely could be um if it's not the case, then ESPN just throwing shade on the man for no reason. But they just don't like um, Canada. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but they like RJ Barrett. Go figure. Um, yeah. Much more uh, Lugent's Dort. Much more of a finisher at the rim than a shooter. Prefers the dribble drive. He has a good shot, but he didn't use it much in the tape I saw. Well, he has he has a weird shot. Let me say that. Uh, you, we talked about uh, late shooting releases with another guy up top here. Uh, maybe Lewis King. Uh, did you say that about him, Bregan? Uh, yeah. Well, Lewis King, I think he was the one I was talking about. Had the has a slow release. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of saw that with Lugens Door as well. I, it looked like a late release. Uh, plus, he has a big forward jump on his shot too. It looks a little strange on tape, but it goes in. I can't really, uh, um, you know, knock him for that. But uh, just I think he might need to tweak that a little bit uh, again. I'm not a basketball expert, so I'm not too sure. But one of the things that did stand out about Lugensdor is his strength. You can tell a lot of that 200 pounds is muscle. He's a very well-built player. He's intimidating for a 6'4 guy. Um, competes for boards, drives it to the lane on a regular basis. I think it's a huge pickup for Bobby Hurley and ASU. What did you guys see from Lugensdor? I'll kick it to you, Aaron. Um, The one thing I do like, he was one of my guys – when we put the list together, I liked his size for a shooting guard coming into college. That's going to be very big for him coming into coming into next year. He he's very he's very physical and he uses his size to his his advantage when attacking the rim. Now, granted, he might not be able to do that at the next level, but he he was able to attack the rim very physically, and I, I like that. Um, mm-hmm. I saw he had good defensive instincts, and he was able to keep his man in front of him. There were times when, when he blocked a shot, and he's not going to get bodied up on defense. Um, I didn't see a lot of separation moves, which are needed sometimes from gu- from the guard position. Um, his shot, he's more of a spot-up guy when he does shoot the three. And it takes him a while to shoot the three also. he kind of It kind of takes him a second. Like he has to breathe in and then shoot the three. That's one thing right. I noticed. A little strange of a release. Yeah, yes. I think that comes from that slasher first mentality he has. That's kind of my and, thought, yeah. Um, I kind of, I see a lot of DeMar DeRozan in this kid. Yeah. Is that, not, is that out of line? Fa- that's not a bad comparison at all. That's, yeah, I mean, I was, because I even went back and watched some of, uh, some of DeRozan's old tape, and I, I did see a lot of the, a lot of the same tendencies. One thing I did like that wasn't touched on, he's very patient on offense. You know, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't try to force too much. He's he's just very overall fundamentally sound. He doesn't. He lets everything happen naturally. He doesn't try to force anything, and I really like that. Um, yeah, you, know, you said he doesn't have a lot of separation moves, but he does have a really quick first step when it comes. No, to he does. Yeah, in order, a and good that really blow blew step. me away. Yeah, yeah. And he just that first step is just all he's really needed, and whether or not that'll hold up uh, at the next level is yet to be seen. But that is something that I was very impressed by. Yeah, he's uh, turned out to be one of my uh, favorite players in this class. Uh, I mean, in the Pac-12. Um, yeah, uh, very good player. Stop throwing shade, ESPN. Um, <laughs> I think we got. I think we got one more guy, um, and and you all know who it is. You guys yeah. don't know who it is, but we know who it is. I'm gonna give you all. <laughs> I'm gonna give you two an, uh, a chance to pronounce this name. Uh, get the pronunciation in your head, and I bet we're all three going to pronounce it differently. Aaron, how would you pronounce this name? Bothga. Okay, Bregan. Well, me being an American, in my head, I'm just seeing both Gatch, and I know that's not both. right. If I were to, like, 
I don't know. If I were to take a stab at it, I don't even know where the kid's from. Say it like Bogok. See, I, I would say uh, Bothgok. So that, that's how <laughs> I would pronounce it. So it is it is uh, spelled both gach. So B O T H G A C H. That's his name. But I'm going to go with Bothgok. Um, he's going to Utah. He's a 6'7, 190 small forward, a four star uh, from. Chandler, Arizona, ranked 122 by 24-7, not ranked by ESPN. Um, but I found out he's originally from Minnesota, um, although that name would lead us to believe that either he has foreign parents or he was a uh, an immigrant. Um, but he was a late commit to Utah, uh, committed in June, a guy who was getting some interest from some small majors, um, but when he went to Arizona and uh, started attending Compass Prep in Chandler, Arizona, started to get a ton of interest and offers from high major programs. Um, and Utah was one of them. I believe um, he caught the eye of uh, San Diego State as well as some others, but ends up at Utah. Um, he's definitely a, a twig out there. Um, yes. Didn't have a lot of muscle, just... Uh, it just a real lanky, uh, small forward. Uh, but he had a big wingspan from the looks of it. He looks much bigger than six, seven. I think his long arms have to do with that. Um, but he's a good, he's a good, uh, stretch player who can score at all three levels, plays pretty fast and energetic, which uh, compensates for his lankiness. Um, and I saw, well, no, I'll save that. Um, go ahead and, uh, go ahead, Aaron. Um, actually he's more point guard, to be honest. Um, he has point guard skills. I, I, I believe he's an Omaha. He's, he's not an Omaha kid, but he has connections in Omaha. Wait, wait, what is he? He has connections from Omaha. Um, Omaha! 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did not plan that. I didn't know you were going to talk about Omaha. <laughs> I'm so glad I put that drop on the soundboard. Oh my god! No, um, some of the guys that um, some of the high schoolers from Doma, the they they all congratulated him when he went to Utah. So that my assumption is they all played on the same prep team or the same AAU team. Um, and immediately after they congratulated, and they all got in car accidents, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Right. I mean. Anyways, yeah, he, he has point guard skills, so he's going to play the point guard. Um, that's one thing I did some research a while ago, um, and I remember he his primary objective is to set up his teammates. Um, I noticed he can catch catch and shoot off, catch and shoot from deep, um, and more than likely he's going to be a four, three, four-year guy. Um, it's Utah, so I don't envision them doing too much. I don't think they're building a program out there. Um, so he's going to be a three, four year guy and he's going to be, he's going to be a really good prospect for them. That's the thing. Go ahead, Reagan. Um, I just found out that we have uh, lost uh, Bregan. He is, uh, his computer reset itself. Oh. Um, so this might be bad. Um, we're going to uh, continue on though. Uh, that that is the beeps I was hearing as Bregan uh, was messaging. So, um, I will just say I want to close this out. Uh, Bothgok uh, compared he drew some comparisons to former Ute uh, Delon Wright. Um, what what do you think of that? Because I'm not an NBA guy, so I didn't really know how to assess that. I didn't watch a lot of Del- Delon Wright in college, to be honest. That was while I was in the Marine Corps, obviously. Okay. Um. And in the NBA, he's a do-it-all point guard. He can do everything, and that's kind of that's kind of what I've seen and heard from him, from Bothka, um, that he can do it all. And a lot of people think he's underrated, and I, I tend to agree about that. We'll see what he does to Utah, because granted, Utah doesn't have. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Utah doesn't have a lot of talent on Not that right team. Now. Yeah, Not right now. Um. But yeah, that's about all I saw. Okay, well, that is everything. Um, final thoughts about the Pac-12, Aaron? A lot of these guys, I think, might be 
a tad bit overrated. Um, Moses Brown. Um, yeah, like I said, a lot of some of these guys might be a tad bit overrated. The guy that stands out to me is Moses Brown and Jules Bernard. Um, other than that, good, solid overall um, overall class in the Pac-12. I just thought some of the guys were overrated. Okay, uh, fair enough. I like this class. Um, kind of surprised me. Let us know what you guys think about the uh, the new format, and uh, we're going to uh, get out of here. Um, for myself, Aaron Thrash, Bragan Kelly, um, last thing I want to say is uh, if you have a PS4, <laughs> my gamer tag, Alex Free 21 add me. Let's play some Madden 19, okay? That's what we're going to do today. I'm serious. Add me. All right. See you guys later. Uh, stay tuned to the group. Uh, we'll see you. Bye-bye.